coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, I've got crabs. Susie makes elk lettuce wraps. Brad Fenson's got duck. Stacy makes a different kind of pie. Tommy cooks his favorite fish. And guess what? Buddy's got cakes too. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs, cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television? <laughs> Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, the sporting chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Welcome to The Sporting Chef, I'm Scott Layseth, and today I've got my favorite crabs. These are Dungeness crabs. Now, as I'm in the other parts of the country, those of you on the East Coast that get blue crabs, they tell me that the blue crabs are the sweetest crabs in the universe. So if you're in Alaska and you can get fresh, fresh, fresh king crab, eat it. But on my side of the country, on the west side of the country, Dungeness is by far king. So I got to tell you a story here. This one seems pretty active. I think this one will probably cooperate. Many years ago, my son Jake, I was trying to tell him to uh, go ahead and hold on to the crab. Nothing bad will happen. So my wife comes home and she says, Jake, don't be such a sissy. So she grabs the crab from the back. The crab reaches around on the other side and grabs her finger like like that. If at all possible, you want to make sure that your crabs are live when you cook them. I got these from an Asian market where they have them in a live tank. If the crabs die, you want to cook them right away because there's an enzyme inside the crab and when they die, it releases the enzyme and destroys the meat on the inside. So if you've ever had some crab where it was either mushy on the inside or um, a lot of the meat was gone, it was most likely cooked when it was dead. So in order to keep them fresh, don't put them on ice. You wanna keep them in a cold area. Put them in the refrigerator with a cold, damp thing of burlap over the top of them. Or what I've got over here is my Orion cooler with some Arctic ice on the bottom. Well, I'm gonna start dealing with my crab here, but I want you to check out Susie Jimenez. So ladies, I know that the men tend to grind so much of the wild game that they bring home. I finally invented an awesome lettuce wrap that you can enjoy making all the time. So you're gonna actually want them to grind it even more. So I just grabbed my leftover ground elk. I added cilantro, some chipotle powder. You can add ginger, garlic, anything you want into this leftover meat. Then you're gonna grab your lettuce. So now this is also healthy. So we can keep a little slim here. And all you're gonna do is put some of this right into the middle of your lettuce. Now, go into your refrigerator and get anything you got. I love peanuts, carrots, you got some scallions, and toasted coconut. To add a little bit more carbs to this, just add a flour tortilla, put this right in the middle of it, wrap it up, and this is lunch when they go to work. So you know what? You're gonna appreciate the fact that they have a lot more ground elk in their refrigerators. You know, you guys tell us you want to see more of Susie, and I promise you'll get more of Susie soon. You have to be careful where your crab comes from. This is boss crab meat. It says here from Florida, a lot of times it'll, you'll see crab from Maryland, and it'll say maybe it starts with a P and ends with an S, and you're thinking, and it rhymes with Phillips, and you're thinking, well, wow, this must be... Maryland crab because the company is from Maryland. So this crab says right here, product of Indonesia. And I don't think Indonesia is anywhere near Maryland. And it is hand-picked crab. Uh, they're calling it blue crab. Oh, these are sw blue swimming crab as opposed to the Chesapeake blue crab. So be really, really careful. So next I want you to check this out. This is the Alabama barbecue trail. So you might be thinking, you know, Alabama is known for great fishing, great hunting. They've got some really good beer with back 40. Of course, there's Tashia Malacasas at Bell Chev. Really, there's a number of great reasons to love Alabama. And here's another one, the Alabama Barbecue Trail. 
When you think of Alabama cuisine, you might think fried green tomatoes and catfish. You need to add barbecue to that list or you'll be missing out. Get ready for a dash of the unexpected with the North Alabama Barbecue Trail. I'm talking pulled pork, smoked chicken, world famous white sauce, and so much more. Check out NorthAlabama.org and don't forget to download the Barbecue Trail app for events, recipes, and rewards. If you're a crab lover, you're gonna to wanna to see what's next on the show. And there's Brad Fenson, Stacy Harris, Tommy Gomes and Buddy, up next on The Sporting Chef. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath cooking one of my favorite foods, the seasonal Dungeness crab. I want to cook them while they're live. All right, boiling water, sea salt, and that's all I use. That's about all the flavor you need for this crab. You could put some other seasoning in it if that's your thing, but really, this is my thing. Sorry, pal. One good thing about these guys is they have a, they're kind of like shrimp. They're gonna turn color when they're done. As long as you're here, take a look at this. I'm making clarified butter. This is a pound of butter, and then you go over very, very, very low, low, low heat. And what that low heat does is we're gonna separate the solids from the clarified part of the butter from the butter fat and it's gonna give a much cleaner flavor and it lasts a lot longer and it has a much higher burning point and I'm gonna use it for dipping my crab. But first, I want you to check out Brad Fenson. Lots of different things you can do with duck, including making soup and stews and what you want is the whole carcass for that. So you have all the bones which gives you rich broth Here's a nice little green wing teal that we shot. Again, what you want to do is when you're cleaning these, you can grab the skin and pull it back and get a hold of it and just pull. It'll come right around the back and you can remove the skin as a whole from the bird and expose that whole carcass underneath. Actually very easy to do. You can see that it doesn't take long to pull the skin right off mm -hmm. over the legs and right down to the, the tail end of them here. So there's a full carcass on the duck. And when you get to this point, what you want to do is you can remove the, the head and the neck. Again, the, the bird shears are very handy for stuff like that. We can take off this one wing. We have one wing on for legal transport. We have both legs and thighs here. I'm just going to cut off the tail end of it. And what we can do is reach in and you try to get all the way up to the top end of the heart and eviscerate them. It's very easy to do. One pull usually gets most of it out. So there's a full bird carcass. And like I said, if you're looking at doing some different meals where you might want to broth or roast them or do different things, this is one way to do it. Quick and easy. Take the legs off again, score the joint pop it off, that weeby knife is really sharp. Green wing teal, whole carcass, lots of different things you can do with it, and ready to transport home. Right, different color, looks like a whole different crab. This crab is dead, the other crab wasn't. Much like shrimp, you know how they turn color when they cook? Uh, that's what these guys do, I'm gonna let that cool off because I'm gonna pull the meat out of it, and I'm going to make, of course, crab cakes. But first, a very simple cocktail sauce recipe. Ketchup, horseradish, a little Worcestershire. There's some capers. I like to put a little lemon zest in there. This is a Meyer lemon. Um, and even the zest on the outside isn't quite as bitter as a regular lemon. So I'm gonna put a little juice in there too. Lemon juice. All right, I'm gonna keep working on this. I also have the clarified butter Meanwhile, I want you to check out Stacy Harris. Today, I'm going to be making Moroccan Shepherd's Pie. It is so delicious, so easy, and a little bit southern, and you'll be seeing that in just a few minutes. I'm using venison for this recipe, and all the silver skin has been cut away, and all you see here is muscle. You want it really nice and brown. The caramelization on the outside of the deer meat is gonna give it a lot more flavor than if you have it 
kind of pale. So make sure you get it good and brown. And a cast iron skillet is always good for that. And this right here is what you're looking for. I'm gonna remove all of the venison onto a plate. Putting an onion and garlic. And I'm gonna stir these two together. Make sure the garlic doesn't burn. Just put a little oil in here to make sure that it doesn't burn. Or you can put the garlic in a few minutes after you put the onions in. I'm gonna add just a little touch of broth to speed these onions up just a little bit and to help the garlic not to burn. All right, now for the yummy stuff for the inside of this dish. I'm gonna be putting a little bit of tomato paste, uh, olives, honey, raisins, and turmeric. And that's what makes this dish Moroccan. Also gonna put the rest of my stock. Reduce until it's thickened. And you'll know when that happens, and you'll know it's time to stop. Turn off the heat, and then put in what my son calls circle piece. Well, when he was two, he's, he's old now, and he doesn't call it that anymore. Okay, I'm gonna also put back in my meat. Now this dish is in my new book, Harvest, and it's easy to follow, easy to do. Now I'm gonna put this into my pie dish. Now I'm gonna add my sweet potatoes to the top of this. If you don't have sweet potatoes, potatoes, is they are just perfect and just as good, but I have a lot of sweet potatoes I need to use up. I'm gonna add my southern sweet potatoes to make this a southern dish. So it's actually southern Moroccan venison shepherd's pie. In my bag, I have two large sweet potatoes whipped with two eggs. You can just slap it on here though and be done with it if you want to. It's time to put the pie in. It's in a 350 degree oven and it'll stay there for about hmm, 30 minutes. Everything's really practically done. You're just getting it warm and making the top get a little bit brown and beautiful. So when it comes out, it's gonna be gorgeous. If you're ever having company over, this is a good one. There's more than just delicious Dungeness crab on the show today. Tommy Gomes cooks moonfish, and Buddy's got some kind of cakes. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at sportingchef.com. It only takes 10 seconds, and it will change your life forever. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. The crab is cooked, and this is how we clean the crab. Now, some people use the crab little nutcracker looking deals. I don't. I use my hands. And let me show you the cleaning part after I pull these legs. You pop the shell off like this. That's not good. Don't eat that part. This is funky, funky. I've had people that have said, man, I cooked crab and it was just really, really gross on the inside. These are the lungs. Since it's got so much of that funk on it right there, and it doesn't always do that, I'm gonna give this a little dunk in the hot water and give it a rinse. Tons of meat there. A couple different ways you can go. You can just crack legs like this, pull the meat out with a small fork. One of the things I like to use is these little pointy ends on the crab legs. You can take them and use it to dig the crab out of the claw part. All right, now the body, not to be forgotten, crack it open. Everywhere there's a leg, there's a pocket of beautiful crab meat, like this right here. That's crab meat, more crab meat, delicious flaky crab meat. So I'm gonna keep cleaning this. I'm gonna end up with enough to make some crab cakes with. Next up is Tommy Gomes. Tommy Gomes from Catalina Offshore Products, and he's cooking the Opa abductor muscle. So it's the abductor muscle from the Opa. What it is is it controls the pectoral fins of the Opa, which looks like a giant barbecued potato chip, 
The pectoral fins actually push the opal along, and this is what it looks like. I like to think of it as a giant frisbee. It has the uh, texture of beef, and it tastes just like beef. Something that's very simple, this is a source of protein that would normally go over the side of the vessel, but if you look at the meat and you see the different texture in there, it's just absolutely perfect. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna block this up. Abductor muscle from the opa. It's a midwater pelagic species. Looks like a big barbecued potato chip. It's warm blooded. We're just gonna stir fry this up. We got some bell peppers and onions, some squash, some mushrooms. I'm gonna toss it all together in here. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper. We have some lemons. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh salsa in there. And when you add the salsa in there, it's, of course it's going to add moisture. So you wanna stir it up and get it all over the place. And then we're gonna bring this up to a high temp and we're gonna let it sit for a moment. You can see it start to boil up all in through here. So again, we keep a pot of rice handy all the time. We're gonna shoot that in there. So there it is, Opa abductor muscle. Pretty neat, you can use this dish with any protein. Check it out, Tommy Gomes, Catalina Offshore from The Sporting Chef, thank you. You can find out more about Catalina Offshore products at CatalinaOP.com. I'm gonna make crab cakes. Now, I've got my crab, what I've done with the crab uh, while you were watching Tommy is I've squeezed the moisture out of it. You wanna get as much of the liquid out of that as you can, and then I'm gonna dust it. This is, um, masa flour, which some of you know I use often. Um, and I'm just gonna give this a toss. What this is gonna do is dry out that crab even more. Mayonnaise. A tablespoon or two of mayonnaise. One egg. I'm gonna use High Mountain Italian Herb Seasoning. And High Mountain Salmon Rub. Here's what's cool about the salmon rub. It has orange, lemon, and lime. It has citrus flavors, which work really, really well with crab. Little lemon juice, some garlic. There's nothing to stop you from putting a little Tabasco or perhaps some fresh jalapeno in there. I've got some Thai basil. I'm gonna chop that up and put that in there also. So here's a deal about slicing herbs. This is called a chiffonade. You take the leaves and you bundle them together thusly. Roll it up tightly like that. And go to town with your buck knife. That's going in. Now a little panko, some Japanese breadcrumbs. Any kind of breadcrumbs will do just fine. Here's the fun part. I'm just gonna mix this up with my hands. I'm gonna form it into crab cakes. And while I'm doing this, Check out Buddy T. Scott, got my grandson Travis here. He's only three years old and he's gonna be assisting me today. All right, we're talking fish cakes again. Except this ain't no downstream fish cake like what all them other ones are. This is a multi-layered one. This one right here, that's a chipotle and a crema. And that's buckboard bacon gar. Now I know everybody don't have buckboard bacon gar, so you could use ham or turkey under that with your crepes. Instead of putting all the milk, I use some of the juice from when I cook this white bass down to make these crepes. I also added some of that high mountain fish and a salmon rub. And when I made that fish dressing, I ended up going and putting mushrooms and olives and peppers and all in there. For the spread, that was cream cheese, a little bit of mayo, and uh, some sour cream. And now this one right here, this is a real special one. Which one is this, Travis? It's, it's for Scott. It's for Scott. Yeah. It's for you, Scott. Yeah, it is. And it's made out of Mexican crepes, AKA uh, tortillas. So you can see, this stuff is so easy. Even a child of three can assist you in coming up with something totally different that your friends ain't never had before. Ain't that right, boy? Yep, sure is. You know, there are some people on the other side of the camera who are tired of watching me cook Dungeness crab. They just want to eat them. I'll hold them back until you get back in just a minute or two. Stay tuned. There's more to come on The Sporting Chef. Hey, 
<laughs> Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. One of the things about um, this crab business is it can be a little bit messy, so I've tidied up a little bit. Now, while you were doing whatever it is you guys do, I made the clarified butter. You take that butter and you put it over very, very low heat, skim whatever kind of foamy stuff comes to the top, and then pour it through cheesecloth and a strainer, and what you have is clarified butter. On the crab cakes, I put a little bit of the masa on the outside to help brown it into some olive oil, into a Camp Chef cast iron skillet. I'm gonna put a little of the, the cocktail sauce on these guys. This is the prize part here, the big, the big claw meat out of the, uh, out of the Dungeness crab. That goes into clarified butter. Check us out on sportingchef.com for more of recipes just like this.